I'm CJ Peterson, and welcome to The Journey is Real. We talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. Today, my guest is Tristan Lamori, and we're talking, we kind of titled her podcast, People Not Profits Are the Bottom Line. Thank you for coming on today, Tracy. Hi there. Thank you so much. Um, that's a really strong statement. People, not profits, are the bottom line. Would you please share how this is a passion for you and what exactly that looks like? Sure. Uh, my business is very heart-centered, meaning that I came to it. I didn't, you know, look uh, to see what, where I could make the most money, even though I'm doing well now. But I came to it from a, an activist perspective. I was a young, uh, I was in sales and marketing, just entry level in my 20s. I had had a, a radio show for a while, just on uh, university radio, but in Toronto that went really three different cities it really was mainstream radio on right. fm radio and so we were used to having a voice and being advocates and um my husband dave parkinson and myself way before we ever thought about starting a business we learned about the case of a, a man who was innocent on death row named jimmy dennis in pennsylvania and long story short and it's a long story but we never without any experience that kind of advocacy work um we got involved we started a campaign that ended up being a 20-year not-for-profit, I mean, by that I mean grassroots advocacy campaign to let the world know. A couple of years in, law firm came in and they started you know, doing all the digging and doing all the work that it takes to overturn a wrongful conviction, even in an obvious case. And fast forward, well, not really fast, but 20 years later in 2017, Jimmy Dennis was released. So he's now an R&B artist living a free life in Pennsylvania and doing amazing things with all kinds of entertainment world you know being that is really in, cool it's a crazy story yeah and me by the time he got out a few years and we're still in touch but a few years before um he got out it suddenly hit me that all of that work that we'd done for 20 years all the media work which led to us being my husband and myself who at 29 years old with no um television and no uh legal experience certainly we were on cnn msnbc court tv nancy grace literally being interviewed you know, with this level and no one ever, and because of the messaging we did. So it took me years and years to think, oh, wait a minute, I could probably monetize that, not that that work. I mean, I wouldn't want to pay for that, but take the skills that I learned doing that and monetize that into what I do now, which is PR for, for entertainers, for small businesses, for entrepreneurs, for anybody with an idea, with a message to get out there. So I've, I've it took me a few years to actually even think about it because for years and years, I just kept doing my, my same day job while we were racking up those really major successes in advocacy work. And then I suddenly thought, wait a minute, I can, you know, do that for a job that I love. So now basically what I do is, uh, and what I, the PR that I do, I call it elevating and celebrating mm -hmm. the great work that other people do. So that's what it comes down to. I'm more pro, I mean, my money, my company's doing well now, so the money will follow, but I, you, you can't just buy your way into Lamori Media. We are project-based. You have to have a good message. You have to, you know, it could be a small business. You don't have to necessarily be changing the world, but in your little corner, you're a good person. You're doing good things. You're building something. It's not about, it, you know, there are things I, I frequently say no to projects if I don't feel them and as I get bigger and bigger the projects that come to me are bigger and bigger and I'm happy to say no to things that don't have that you know and I think that it all comes down to the people versus profits because you know people are the bottom line and that's a quote from my husband but it's people people that are the bottom line we've always said that as activists and we still say that in business and it's actually true in business it's not just a silly little activist thing it's actually profits come from your people too if you're if you're good to your your staff then your staff will want to stay with you if you have, provide good customer experiences with the humans that come to you you know those clients will retain remain with you mm -hmm. so it actually is good business to be kind so even for people who think oh i don't care about that but for those of us who you know probably looked cross-eyed at, at you know big business people in our activist days there is a different way you don't have to be stepping all over people to be hugely successful either it's all in how you what's important to you i mean to me a person who reaches hearts and who reaches and touches lives is more successful than any business person that i'm aware of um, but part of the premise behind the journey is real i wanted to give real people a voice a place to share their heart and share their passion and i don't charge I 
do that because then I don't have to put up with commercials. I don't have to have commercials. I'm not um, judging away. Yeah. Why I love podcasts so much. So many do the same thing. It's the it, it, podcasts themselves. So many of them are we are elevating and celebrating each other. We're not charging, you know, like we, we don't charge to, you know, a good, I don't like the podcast. I don't appear on podcasts or put my clients on podcasts that charge because to me that cheapens the brand, that cheapens what the podcast is doing. It cheapens, you know, what we're doing. I think the beauty of it all is that we all are learning from each other. We all have, you know, in every way, whether it's those hard business podcasts that I seem to be doing all the time now because the entrepreneur messaging really likes me or the ones that I really, I mean, I'm really, like I said, I'm heart centered. It's funny, you know, I've been doing all these hard business podcasts lately because my message is really good for entrepreneurs and executives, how to build your brand, how to get into media. And so I've been asked for a lot of them. And so about a month into that, somebody messaged me on LinkedIn and said, Oh, I see you have the same passion for business as I do. And I was literally like this. Passion for business? I don't believe that I would describe myself as someone with a passion for business. No, no, no. I still laugh thinking about it. I was like, I was almost like looking at that email terrified going, what did I? <laughs> what did I say <laughs> I would make up on the wrong podcast <laughs> you know <laughs> I guess they they were trying you know I get what they were saying but I was like no I don't actually have a passion for business or finance or making money I have a passion now like I love what I do and I and I love helping people find their voice and I love shining a light on the you know, and I'm excited every time I get a media success I can call up that that's why I don't work for giant corporations I work I don't work I work for little incorporated like me smaller medium sized businesses or like you know some major entertainment projects but but those aren't going to change the thing is I won't go work for you know, I should never say never, but the way I, I don't think, the way I think now, unless they really convince me that that's, that what, you know, my, what I would dread is never going to happen. But I don't like the idea of working for definitely political parties, for governments, even for major corporations, because I can't be guaranteed when I sign that contract that it's all going to be something I can support the next day because it's not one person. If it's a small or medium sized business or a political campaign, I guess if I really knew that person, but even then, the, the, the the environment that they have to work in, it's just such that, it, you know, the messaging can change day to day. Right. And I want to always be confident with what we put out that I'm feeling great about it. Yeah, I mean, I my sister and I have a publishing company, Texas Sisters Press, and we could have gotten grants to start it just because in the U.S. you can do that a lot. Unfortunately, you are part of their process at that point, and you kind of have to answer to them. And so we didn't want to answer to them. We wanted to be able to help authors the way we would have wanted to be helped when we jumped into the author world. Love it. Yep. And so for us, it's about the person. I mean, if you look at my brand, why the stories are fiction, the journey is real. The journey is real. The journey to fruitfulness. For me, it's all about the journey and touching lives and touching hearts. Um, even my books, a portion of the proceeds go to different charities on the novels. And I love so it. It's yep. like, it's like, we're here to reach everybody else, not necessarily to make money. It's kind of like, are you, are you working to live or living to work? You know? Yeah. And the money That's will the come. You'll survive. Point. You're doing the right thing and you're out there and you're doing, you know, like, you know, you will get, you know what I mean? You will get your money, whether it's enough to eat that dinner or, or whether a living wage, or even if it starts to get more successful. And that's the journey I've been on. I started as a freelancer. I was never money centered and I'm still not, you know, but everybody looks at my, you know, you can't argue with my results now. And I have a hugely impressive resume and I speak internationally and all that. And I did, you know, like everyone wants to do that. But I didn't do that by doing what people tell you to do. I didn't do that by only, you know, taking the top dollar only for the high profile only. I was like, man, you know, I'm just going to do this. And even when I started out, I was way undercutting myself in terms of pricing because I, you know, had no experience that like I had no professional experience. So I was like, you know what? Let me just prove myself. Here's what I've done for myself. Here's what I've done as an activist. Just give me, you know, one contract. Yeah, and, me, and I just did that. And I did that. I did that. And it was more important to do a good job. And now, you know what? Those people are still with me. They're either still with me and they pay more now, or they've ten, sent 10 clients my way. I mean, if you just do a good job, Mm -hmm. and, you know people will cut you know it'll happen and so do what you're passionate about for the right reasons like you said it's not about you know and I'm sure maybe this is 
maybe business pe- hard people look at us and say, oh, they're talking crazy. They should be, you know, but that's fine. That's not the life. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not the life I want. Right. Exactly. You're, uh, you're like me. My I'm father coming in the air for those who are listening. It's like to us, it doesn't matter to me. It's about the person to you. Yeah, it's and about my the father person. said the same to me at 30 when we were in the middle of or 29. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, he's absolutely right. He is right. But oh, well, because, he, you know, being a father, seeing us spending all that time and effort on all the advocacy work, all the death penalty stuff. That, I mean, listen, to me, this is just crazy. I don't know why they don't build a business with me. We weren't thinking anything near like a business, but I guess he saw the way we worked. And he said to me when I was 28, and he's saying it like a, a, a father that's frustrated, right? He's like, if you guys spend as much time building a business, which is like saying climb the mountain to me then, it wasn't even a thought, you know, building a business as you do on all this, you know, ad- prisoner stuff, which was freeing the innocent man from death row in that case, and a lot of other advocacy work that we did. I mean, but- your work might not have, it might have cost you a lot of time and a lot of effort, um, but you meant the world to that one. I the result, right? So my father would say, if you spend as much time building a business as you do with this stuff, you'd be a millionaire by the time you're 30. And he said that to me when I was 28. And I literally, I didn't even know. I remember sitting there thinking, huh. and I stopped and I, just, and I was like, he's talking about five hours a night. We're sitting here five hours a night doing all this stuff. Yeah, he's probably right. Oh, mm-hmm. and, I, and I remember, but did that change? I was like, but no, you know what? This is what I'm doing right now. And my dad is like, ah. And it's funny because now I laugh and I'm like, you know, but looking back on it now, we we ended up having a major role in freeing him in as a man from death row. It wasn't just us, but we, like he he says, it all changed when we came in because we started the wheel turning and then the lawyers got involved because of that and all that stuff. So I think, and we were penniless through a lot of that. And I think, you know what, that's a great way to spend my thirties. You know, it was fine. It wasn't until I was 41 when I was literally 41, I'm 51 now when I suddenly thought, oh, wait a minute, I could probably take the skills there and learn to write a press release and make a business out of it and gee why don't I do that but I mean that was literally 20 19 years after I first wrote my press release for mm-hmm. for Jimmy Dennis and eight years after I was successfully writing press releases for local political campaigns that I was an advocate for like not for work but I mean I was a volunteer mm-hmm. thinking this would be the way to go so I was writing their press you know release and getting results and never thinking about it as a job so you know things it will come to you but it doesn't like that's you know, now I'm doing well in my business because now, you know, it's just happening. Like other one person promotes me, the other person promotes or recommends me and then higher and higher level. My work is excellent that I'm on a panel that I'm so here I am now at this stupid level that I should never have been able to access. <laughs> By accident, but you know. By accident, you know what I mean? Like, I should have been, at v- I mean, when it's not COVID, there's VIP parties. And in, in 2019, I had nine trips to five different countries on four continents, all paid for by clients nice you know but why because I was a dumbass activist who thought I could <laughs> help free somebody that nobody was and I people probably thought we were nuts for 10 years oh yeah there they go again with that innocent on death row stuff <laughs> I'm making little quote marks you know <laughs> but anyway that but you were it turns out you were right and like I said you what you did meant the world to that one person it reminds me of that that little short story poem thing where there's the grandfather and the son are walking along the shore and there's like a ton of starfish that had washed up in the storm the night before and the grandson's throwing a starfish in one after the other and the grandfather goes well you can't save them all he goes no but i can save this one and he throws it back into the ocean and it's like you can't save them all and you can't help them all but you can help that one person and if you do that one thing for that one person you'll change their life forever. Well, and who knows what that one person will do exactly. and what the other person, you know, like. And what I find amazing. Doing that. Yeah. yeah, and what I find amazing is your gift to him was freeing him for something he didn't do. His gift to the world is his music. Absolutely is, and it really is. So, I mean, it, it comes around and it makes the world a more beautiful place for everybody. And especially now that you say that too, we had a song this year just called Tears This Year about everything we've all been through with the COVID and the upset and the trauma and everything last year. And his song is about tears this year, but his whole thing all those years on death row was never, never give up. Mm-hmm. And now that's in that song, never, never give up. We're going to get to the other side of this. We're going to, and you know, whenever people are upset about isolation or whatever else, he was all last year saying, and he'd only been out of death row for two years saying, you know, it's not what I was expecting either, but you know what? You make the living room, your exercise room, you make the bedroom, your studio, you make that, <laughs> you know, you, yeah, you make it what you need. 
do what you need and get through everything. And you can and and never give up because there's always more on the other side. Mm -hmm. Um, So people who want to know more about you and what you do, how can they find you online? Uh, So yeah, they can find me on, if you spell my name right, then they can find me everywhere. There's only (laughs) your name. So Tracy Lamori on Facebook, uh, Tracy Lamori PR Media on Instagram, lamorimedia.com on the interwebs. Uh, Tracy Lamori on LinkedIn is a good place. And also, please also find Jimmy Dennis Music on all streaming platforms and listen, because he, you know, his voice was literally stolen from him for over 20 years. And now he's got a voice. And now we like to laugh. So he was, he was on death row. I was the activist. Now he's our claimed R&B artist. He's been written up in BET and Rolling Stone and, mm-hmm. and I'm his publicist. So never say never. You never know what's on the other side. Nice. Um, I do have you, if people want to find you on a website, I have prosperipress.com. Is that accurate? Uh, no, that's where my book is. That's my publisher. But my website is lamorimedia.com. Okay. And can you spell that for people? Yeah. So L-A-M-O-U-R-I-E and then media is M-E-D-I-A.com. So Lamori is like the French Lamour, Lamour I-E mm-hmm. and then media.com. Okay, well, you mentioned your book. What book do you have out? So my book is called, it's coming up in about a month. It's called Get Repped. Build well, by, the your time, yeah, by the time this airs in July, it will be out already. So I'll send you, oh, that's right. It's right where, so I'll send you the link and it, the link will be under there maybe. But it is called Get Repped, Build Your Brand with Effective Public and Media Relations. And it talks to everybody, um, but it also, it, it it's, uh, explains basically how to build your brand, how to get media attention. Not so much how to get a publicist, but what will when you might want one, but also a lot of things that you can do on your own and what to do and what not to do when dealing with media. Well, and that's that's helpful. That's handy, um, especially from, like I said, the author perspective in the author world, because we are our own PR or we're paying a lot of money to have somebody be a PR. So the more, you know, that we, with you, you know I, I do discounted author rates, but that's all I'm going to say that's advertorial. <laughs> Well, and the more you're right, generally it's a huge, you know, most authors that publish, you know, individual people, right? And it's very, they've already put all their heart and soul into that publishing and that time and everything. And especially at traditional PR rates, I said, I do have uh, affordable human rates, but traditionally, like an author, (laughs) but I mean, traditionally, go to a PR company, it's like 3,000 a month, three months minimum. That's how much it is. Yeah. And it's like, there's independent authors. Like, I started off as an independent author, an indie author. Um, Now, my sister and I own a publishing company, and that's what we publish the books through. But we had to pay for an editor. You have to pay, and and you have to, you have to pay for a copy and content editor at the very least. Yeah. Because if your book, it, it could be the best book written. But if it's not edited properly, they can't get through it and they can't get the message. You for also, sure. people do judge a book by its cover. You have for to pay sure. for a good cover artist. And so by the time you get to the end of that, you're like, well, I want to get this book out. I want to get the messages out, but I can't afford a publicist. I know, yeah. So your it's book is like no, huge. But you, you have to either be doing, either do have a publicist and, and be careful when you pick one, because honestly, with authors, it's like with musicians, there are so many sharks out there. I'm not saying that you do, but people who aren't even public, it's hard for, like publicists are usually good, but there's a lot of people publicity promoter and if you're not you don't know the differences a lot of just random people who what they mean by publicity is give me a thousand dollars and i'm going to put it on my site and on my socials so it's really hard for authors to differentiate between what are people even offering and do i even bother with any of it so it's really important if you have the time more time than money that you could that you know like some real tips on how to deal with media right and if you have a little bit of money that you can invest you know even though you're burnt out on it all you know, I wouldn't suggest going for like a three you know what major talk to somebody who worked with authors more like like me or maybe it's other people like but because if it comes down to it if you've just written the book and as you know this if it's just sitting on the shelf people are, are hugely disappointed I talk to authors all the time who put their whole life into this and they think now it's published now and three people buy it because nobody knows about it because there's so much noise out there and it you know so that you really have to be either reaching out yourself to those things or find someone who is actually and not like a lot of those publishing companies you know that you probably dealt with before you started yours where they'll, they'll even say oh buy some marketing I, people hire me all the time after they bought that marketing from the publishing company and they didn't do anything they might have put a press release on the wire for them which doesn't do anything without support yeah you know. what we do is we sit down with each of our authors um i handle the social media aspect of it and we meet via zoom and i set them up so that they get a brand 
and I streamline them so that it makes social media a little bit easier. But I know you have connections that we don't. And so, you know, if you can find somebody and that's what you mainly need a publicist for, because you can handle social media. It's pretty easy. It may sound daunting, but by the time like we get through with the authors, they're like, oh, well, that's not as hard as I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. But you and, don't know how to reach out to like- somebody, You need somebody who has a bigger reach than you do as well. You can do what you do, but it's going to take you longer to build it up. Yeah, yeah. And just to end it, like if anybody, you know, like if you or any authors that you work with, everybody that is interested in like, just to leave that so you know there is an option. I don't want to get advertorial in these because I like <laughs> I teach about being editorial versus advertorial. But just because you're talking about authors not being able to afford that, I do make, I have a couple of options that are like under a thousand. One is pretty much like a, a lot under a thousand. Um, and even if after one month with me, even if someone just wanted to do a limited month, guaranteed, like I don't take anybody on unless I know at the beginning, I can get you this, 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 and this. And at the end of this month, you're definitely going to have these things. Plus I have two more weeks to see what else I can get for you. So, you know, if, so you're you know, pretty upfront and honest, but this is what you're going to get with the money. Yeah, you're because I've done enough of this now. I have a, I have enough um, contacts and connections that you know I don't take anybody's money unless I have some idea at the beginning what my path is going to be right. And so by the time and I, I think, talk to people, yeah, I've and done I think relationships with editors and I've done you know that I know where I can fit this and what I can do here. And but none of it's ever paid. Like I never people don't come to me to to buy advertising. Like you were talking about, I'm never going to say go pay these people to be listed here or pay this guy even five bucks to go on their plot because to me that's like then they're not you're advertising that's not what I do I'm I'm there to like present this person as an expert and find opportunities for them to give good content yeah you know so you take each person as an individual you don't handle them with the same exact formula which I exactly. think is ideal when you're working with somebody for PR yeah, yeah, you have to, because I take them, it's not just the book, like their book is the one thing, right, or the story or the, I mean, or their book or their, you know, store or whatever they're promoting, but to me, it's the person, because mm -hmm. I can't interview a book, I can't interview a store, I can't interview, so it's the person is the expert, is the person is the soul of it all, which is right back to that, real people, right, it doesn't matter what your business is, what your, you, you, why are you in that business, there is a passion there, unless you just fell into it because your mom had that business and you're like, but even so, you would have gone and done something else if you didn't have a passion for it, if you didn't have a, so what's your, you know, that that you find that even if it's someone that cleans you know cleans toilets for a living they have a story and i can get them in the media because you have a story and then also you're just from your work you have knowledge that we don't have i don't care how low you think your job is there's things you know so there's stories everybody has a story every business has a story and i, I take i say business because i've been doing all these entrepreneur you know things recently but it's not just business every person every every activist every you know people share some of my clients you know one of them just wrote a book, but she's not an author. She's had to write the book to get the word out. She's an author now, but she had to get she, her feelings out because she just lost her, her partner. And mm -hmm. so the book is about getting over that and finding, she felt called to like get that message out so that other people can realize there's a way, you know, so it's not even a profit. Obviously now she wants to sell her book, but it was a message. Yeah. So. You no, know, and, and the most of the books, all the books I write have a message somewhere in them. And the message, when we published the books, my husband and I decided, as long as the messages touch at least one heart, publishing that book and all the work and all the money that went into it was worth it. And so that's kind of how we went into it. Um, we have about, I hate to catch up, we have about two minutes left. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, just thank you so much for everything. It's been a great conversation. I always end with, Quoting Jimmy Dennison is never, never give up because, and then I add to that saying, you didn't get this far to only get this far. So no matter if you, I say this a lot, but it, it, I think it's important, especially in these times to repeat, that no matter where you are, whether, you know, people are applauding you and you're on stages and you got goals and you whatever, keep on going, even if it's rough, but even more importantly to the people who might've felt like, I always say jumping off a bridge yesterday or having a hard time, who are just done, overwhelmed you know what you got through to today. You didn't do that yesterday. You didn't jump off that bridge. You didn't do it like you didn't. You survived 100% of your worst Good days. Job. And you're here for a reason. So keep on going because you don't want to miss the really cool thing that might happen next week. So, you know, you didn't get this far to only get this far. You got through all that and all those people are trying to bring you down. You made it. So keep on making it. Awesome. And the name of your book is what again? Get wrapped, build your brand with effective public and media relations. Awesome. And for those who want to find out more about Tracy, you can find her on Lamour Media, L A M O U R I E M E D I A dot com, Lamori Media. 
Um, Tracy, thank you for coming on today. Thank you for sharing your heart. It was really nice to talk to somebody who specifically looks at the person as a whole and as a heart instead of looking at them as a business and the financial end and aspect of it. So I you, you know, but like that we're all people. That's what it comes down to. And you know, anything else is just not genuine. So just, you know, do business with people. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And thank you for listening mm -hmm. to The Journey is Real, where we talk to real people with real passions who share a real portion of their hearts. I'm CJ Peterson of cjpetersonwrites.com. Until next time.